Hello and welcome to the Great Big Money Experiment. This video is different than the other GBME videos because it's a book review. So let's review Early Retirement Extreme by Jacob Lund Fusker. Firstly, this book is more philosophy and a work about systems thinking than a typical finance book. I'd say only 25% is about finances, which makes sense. It makes sense because the author's whole point is that your finances don't exist in a vacuum. This book is about you as a system, and your finances are only a component in this system, which is your life. The book starts off describing the world as it exists today. We live in a society where we value specialization. Many jobs have just one function. The worker in that job is very efficient at what they do, and they do it well. This idea originated from the introduction of the assembly line. That's the way education is also set up. Modern education exists to teach you how to fit in socially, and how to memorize and repeat information. In tertiary studies, it teaches you to specialize. The next chapter deals with the opposite of specialization. The author calls this being a renaissance person. He discusses the four levels of being tied to your job and the external world, and how much your actions directly impact your life. A renaissance person's actions directly influence their life, and they don't depend too much on the rest of the world. They do things for themselves. A renaissance person has a broad base of skills and is competent in most, but does not necessarily seek to become an expert in any of those skills. This person is contrasted with the salary person. The salary person is very dependent on their job for their livelihood. Their actions don't make an immediate and visible difference in their lives. They exist as cogs in a machine, doing one thing well, but incompetent in most areas of life. An example of these two extremes would be that a renaissance man repairs his own bike that he uses for transport. A salary man takes his bike to a shop for repair. His bike is merely a recreational item. Obviously, the author prefers being a renaissance person, so in the next chapter he discusses the seven different aspects that makes up one's life. He gives goals for these aspects, that is, physiological, intellectual, emotional, economic, ecological, technical, and social. A person exists as a system. These seven aspects influence each other. For example, if you decide you want to be more frugal, that's an economic goal, but your friends, a social part of your life, go out every second night and rack up large entertainment bills, you'll find your social and economic aspects clashing, not to mention your social and health aspects clashing. The solution to this issue is taking a systems approach to living. Let's just have a quick look at how the system looks. At the highest level, you have your values. These are the things that are important to you. They influence your goals. If your goals are contradictory to your values, you either have misidentified your values or your goals need to be changed. Your goals influence the strategy of how to achieve them. A strategy is an overall approach and way of thinking. Consider it to be a framework of your actions. The tactics are the actions that make up your strategy. Generally, lists and tips for how to live frugally are mere tactics. They are actions, but they're ineffective in the long term, because the said tactics might not fit in with your strategy, goals, or even values. Taking a system approach is difficult, because the process isn't linear, and there are so many interactions that it's hard to keep track of how everything influences each other. Anyway, next time you do something, try to figure out if it conflicts or promotes your life approach, goals, or values. The last two chapters of the book is the part that most directly relates to frugal living and finances. Again, tactics aren't generally effective long term, but the author does provide a couple of ideas and vague tactics for frugal living in a couple of categories. The idea isn't for you to follow these tactics to a T, but rather to use them as inspiration in forging your own tactics that fit in with your strategy. The final chapter of the book deals with financial calculations. It can be hard to follow. If you're new to these calcs, try reading slowly and absorbing it over a long time. 
If you have experience with these calculations, you can probably read the text just as a refresher. So overall, I'd consider this an advanced book. It is written academically and typeset that way, and therefore it reads like a textbook. Reading the Amazon reviews really highlights that this book is misunderstood. It really isn't about predefined steps that you can copy to reach financial independence. Heck, it isn't even about financial independence either. It's about building the life you want. If financial freedom is part of that life, that's a coincidence. I think in my case, where I feel like I've reached the limit of incremental change and optimization of my finances, this book came to me at the right time. It's time for a complete systems redesign in the way I live my life. And what that entails, I'm not sure yet, but stay tuned to the Great Bid Money experiment while I figure this out. Until next time, stay frugal.